Hello and thank you for joining us. My name is Glenn Hoyle with Steiner's Automation Products Group and today I'm going to talk about the configuration of the ET200SP multi-field bus head module. Uh, we are going to connect this unit to a Compact Logics PLC and go through the steps on that. Uh, the ET200SP multi-field bus unit is a unique unit in the uh, in regards to the fact that it can communicate either Profinet Ethernet, IP, or Modbus TCP. All that is done through a free configuration tool that you can download from the Siemens Service and Support site. So real quick, we'll take a look at what we have. So this is what the unit looks like. Right now it's in the uh, it's in its infant state. So we've got three flash and LEDs. It's not configured yet. Uh, the unit supports up to 64 I.O. devices. And we're basically going to connect this over to our Compact Logix PLC. And let's get started. First thing we need to do, I'm going to fire up our multi-field bus configuration tool. Maximize that for us. Uh, first thing we do is go to the top right to settings. In the settings, we have uh, this is where we select our network interface card. This is how we're going to go out and browse for the device and configure it. Uh, the other thing that you have here, the hardware catalog for the I.O. modules of the ET200SP family, that would be handled through the install new GSD file here if uh, you had to add some newer cards or new cards with new firmware. Okay, let's go to our home button. We're going to go to assign parameters. If you've worked with Siemens products in the past, um, this is like our accessible nodes here. So I'm going to click on the scan. It's going to go out and scan the network. If we had multiple units out on this network, it would go out and find all the different ones and allow us to configure them. It found my ET200SP. It's all at defaults. I'm going to give it a device name. ET200SP underscore multi-field bus. IP of this guy is 192.168.0.30. Once you do that, you hit the Assign Network Parameter button on the right side here. It tells me that my new IP address was set, and I say OK to that. The next step, I'm going to go to Create a New Project. New Project, I'm going to call this my ET200SP Multi-Field Bus. Set the path of where I want to store it, and click on the Create Project button. That's then steps you to the next here. Um, this utility allows you to configure either the ET200SP multi-field bus or the PN multi-field bus coupler, which is basically a gateway, uh, Profinet to Profinet or Profinet to Ethernet IP. I'm going to give this a device name and just call it the same, ET200SP underscore multi-field bus. I'm going to click on the Create Select device. And this will take a moment to generate. So then we get like a little hardware configuration utility here. Um, in our unit we have a 16-point digital input and a 16-point digital output. Pretty straightforward to configure. I'm going to highlight my digital input. It's a 16-point 24-volt DC standard using firmware version 1.0. Going to double click on that, it puts drops that into slot one for us. Then I'm going to select my output module, and that is also a 16 point. It's a ST for standard, and it has version 1.0. I'm going to double click on it, that drops that into slot two. And then to terminate the network, we always need our server module, so I'm going to drop in the server module. If obviously if you have more I.O. modules, you keep populating them. As I stated earlier, you can have up to 64 I.O. modules connected to this device. I'm going to do a quick save on the project. Next thing we're going to do is do parameterize the station. I'm going to highlight the head unit. This is where we define the field bus that we wanted to communicate. A couple of other things that you can set up here, some diagnostics. So you, you can look for under voltage. Um, if you've ever used configuration control in step seven, where you can uh, basically load up different hardware configurations. Uh, then our multi field bus parameters. Um, we're going to go to our field bus type. It defaults to Profinet, hit the drop down. You see you have Profinet Ethernet IP or Modbus TCP. We're going to do Ethernet IP today. 
and our IO data alignment is uh, you have the selection for byte or word. We're going to leave it at byte. Okay, next thing we're going to do at this point, I have to go to transfer the configuration down to the unit. All right, I'm going to transfer the configuration. I'm going to browse real quick for the device. And I'm going to highlight it. Once you highlight it, you then get the option to start transfer. Make note of the user files that will get downloaded to your program folder. Uh, the key one for us is the electronic data set or EDS file, uh, which is what we need to use to import into our Studio 5000s project. I'm going to hit the Start Transfer button. It's going to bring up my dialog box, transferring down and exporting the configuration files. And once that is finished, we should get some check boxes or some green checks. There we go. And then you should get that everything was exported successfully. Click on OK. All right. Project's been saved. We can close this down. That is all there is uh, as far as the configuration on the semen side. Okay. All righty. And then we're going to fire up our Studio 5000 software. Okay. So we've got our Studio 5000 project uh, that I've pre-configured uploaded here. Uh, I'm going to switch to the camera again real quick. If you notice now, I now have two flashing green LEDs, meaning that we're, um, the configuration is downloaded and it sees it. Or I should say that it's been configured. That's why it's flashing. Okay. EDS installation tool. Once this utility fires up, we'll be able to upload our EDS file and then add it to our hardware configuration. And once that fires up here. All right, our EDS wizard is up. We're going to click on next. We're going to register an EDS file click Next. We're going to browse to our project folder. And there's my EDS file. I'm going to open that. Click Next. It's going to import it in. Next. Next. Next and finish. Okay, so next thing we need to do is I need to come over to my ethernet. I'm gonna highlight it. Okay, we're gonna go to ethernet, right mouse click. We're gonna add new module. And as that is trying to fire up, there we go. I'm going to clear my filters so that I can just parse out and go to Siemens. And I'm going to select my ET200SP multi-field bus, create. And as it's thinking, Create a name, ET200SP underscore multi field bus, IP address 192.168.0.30. We're going to click on OK. <clears throat> All right, we now have that. And going to do a quick save on the project. 
Okay, so just want to show you real quick. If we go to my logics and I go to my edit tags, you'll now see that I have my ET200SP for my inputs. There's all my inputs and I've got my outputs right below that. So uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a little bit of logic here. So I've started a timer. I'm going to add a new rung and I'm going to add a move instruction. And I'm going to add my timer one and I'm going to write the accumulated time. And I'm going to send that to my destination, which is going to be the output module of my ET200SP multi field bus device. And I'm going to send that to data output zero. Okay, perfect. I'm going to save that. And once it's done saved, I'm going to click here and go to, we're going to download that. And as it's connecting up, Okay, let's go to download. There we go, almost done. there. Okay, let's put it into run mode. And let me switch back to my video. You'll now see that I have three LEDs, which means we're docking, and I'm writing to the outputs. I'm writing the timer accumulated time to the outputs.